so my name is Larry D. Banks, and um, I recently came out of hospital about four and a half months ago um, from what the doctors term as COVID pneumonia. And um, yeah, I just wasn't feeling well. And uh, some people around me, in particular my friend who's like my sister, was suggesting I go and see the doctors. I knew something was enough. I wasn't breathing correctly. I'm a musician. I sing and I make music and I write. And um, I could tell just through that, trying to sing with the lengthier notes, I was struggling. And um, yeah, one night particularly, I got up. In particular, I got up and just couldn't breathe, just couldn't breathe. And uh, my friend Donna called me and came around with a COVID test. And I tested positive for these tests. And um, yeah, and then from there, an ambulance was called. I needed oxygen. They gave me oxygen. And I just remember being in the ambulance and just not feeling well, not being able to really breathe properly and just thinking what's going on. So I got into the hospital and immediately they were suggesting you've got to go to ICU. There's something not right here. And they were doing some tests on me. It was all quite rushed. And the second day of being in the hospital, I found myself in ICU and told you have pneumonia, but severely. And my lungs had hardened and um and very scarred and um i was just you know very compromised let's say and uh, they were um suggesting to induce me into a coma i heard what i heard what i thought was three days which eventually ended up being three months and remember closing my eyes and just waking up into a whole new reality and um just just an unusual place really um and this situation where i was in a room with some other people and and i was then the first thing i was told actually was telepathically i heard this is an endurance test you've got to find your way back to planet earth so i knew from that something was to was going to unfold and then I found myself in almost like a reoccurring situation of like I was waking up but in this room with other people kind of rehearsing a script and it was bothering me because every time I seemed to fall asleep and wake back up I'd be in this room and I just desperately wanted to be back in my apartment so I remember that so I was quite disturbed by that this was playing out for a while and then I was um it was said to me that um, if you can figure out where you are, how you got into this room, you can then, you know, move on to the next test, let's say. And I somehow grasped that. I went, I, will, I auditioned for a, a, a play and that's why I'm here. We're rehearsing, right? You know, kind of suggesting that. And I got it right. And then I was in another reality, a complete new reality. Saying that, there was quite a few things playing out. It was like, my awareness just became 360. Like I could see everything happening all at once. I can't fully explain how that's possible, but I just could see lots of things playing out and I was a part of all of it. Um, but then I'd kind of be pulled into, I'd say another reality playing out, which wasn't so, so great was, um, and I was told I'm interacting. They didn't say, they didn't use the term dark energy. They were saying low frequency beings. Um, and I was being pulled into situations that were extremely uncomfortable, um, slightly being tortured. And, um, and this, these beings and energies trying to keep me in this dimension. And I had to keep figuring out somehow how to get to a higher dimension and higher frequencies. So that played out, but this, these particular beings, they were like humans kind of thing. Um, they just seemed to be following me through a lot of the experiences I was having or trying to. So that played a big part in how I kind of came back after three months after the coma back into my body. But, um, just a, a lot of experiences that had, had happened and were happening to me. And I, one I remember in particular was where I was being reminded 
of the magic that's inside of me, but inside of all of us. By that I mean I was shown that I just had to tap into that knowing. It was just a, a suggestion that just remember who you truly are through all the experiences, through everything you encounter, the power that you have to create anything in your life. You know, we and I, and um, and in that moment, I just uh, there were some people in this other room. I was in another room, another space. There were some people in there that I, 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 I was familiar with, and I happened to to manifest this car it was just like this red car just hovering in the air i thought about it and it appeared and it was hovering and i jumped in the car because it was reminding me of the magic that's inside of me and everybody and um as that was happening i was then shown an image of me when i was about six seven wearing um, a magician's hat almost like a wizard's hat purple pointy hat that my father had bought me and as soon as I saw this kind of play out this image I remembered immediately I was like I thought I remember that I remember that period and and and, and, and what they were suggesting when I say they like I'd say my guides uh, an energy that was just this really good energy was reminding me that what I felt in that moment as that child I knew without any influence from others, I knew that I had that power. It's how I got here. I was reminded that's how we all get here through awareness and consciousness um, and frequencies and energy. That's how we come into the, the physical through another means, obviously through a human body, but initially it starts from this creation. And that power is in with, when it, when it, within each and every one of us. And as this is playing out, I'm remembering and I'm seeing other things and other experiences and how that played out and how I manifested that in my life and just so many magical things happening there. Then there was a moment that I was shown of purpose in life and of being of service. And then I found myself on top of a rooftop and um, my role was to assist what looked to me to be the Christ image. It was like an image of Christ in what was like a sky, but it was a portal. And I'm on top of the roof and I'm watching, I'm looking over lots of buildings below me, lots and lots of buildings on earth and just seeing these lights and souls leaving the earth plane and coming up and coming up. And my job was just to oversee really just checking and watching the magic of that and how that comes to be and then at the same time i was seeing what i was what looked like the christ image and i was watching these souls go through the portal into another dimension it was just a beautiful image this light that is indescribable and i just had the pleasure and uh, the value that comes with that and the the meaning in that it just makes everything else seem you know not as important it really as i understand it now it's about recognizing that importance that we do all of us every single one of us comes in comes here with playing a part in the bigger picture in the bigger puzzle however big or small it might seem how we perceive it it's huge to the the bigger consciousness let's say and uh that was part of my role now going back to the car that i had manifested in that moment because there's a lot of things playing out at the same time um i saw in the corner of my eye a soul hovering up towards the ceiling and what would have been like the earth body light shadow i could see the bottom part of the body going up at kind of a little bit I'd say it seemed stuck and I put my hand underneath the feet and I pushed up and assisted and as I did that I heard thank you and I recognized the voice and I just made a mental note of that and I just recognized that voice but I'll leave that there because I am writing a book and everything's more in depth meaning there's just 
being in the coma for three months and having such a big experience, there's a lot of information here. With all the experiences, and there's many of them, I was constantly being reminded of the divine and the divinity that is within me. And we are all an extension of that divine. And that somehow I was able to navigate through many of the experiences because there's so many. I even had a life review. I had half of my life review, which was quite taxing <laughs> for me because it was so much. And I, and I remember saying, I was going, this is a lot <laughs> because I was going through so much, all these experiences. I visited the stars, which funny enough, I'd been told years ago by a spiritual teacher that I happened to come across in um, Marble Arch. I happened to come across this kind of meeting and I kind of snuck in the back. What's going on here? I was in the back and um, the head of the spiritual church pointed me out and I'm quite shy like that. I'm not and I'm, I am. It's quite funny how I can. I'm a singer and I can be up front and do what I do. But when it comes to stuff like that, I like to sit back and observe and not, you know. And he pointed me out and he said two things. He said, and I had been thinking about this a couple of days previous. He said, you need to stop smoking. This is about 15 years ago because I stopped smoking. Not immediately after that. He said, you need to stop smoking. I was like, oh, I was just thinking about that. But this is what, what really got my attention was um, that... Um, I'd been singing somewhere in Wales and before the show, I sat, I was out in this field looking up at the stars and I just locked onto this beautiful bright star and I was staring at it, staring at it, staring at it. And I was thinking, I want to visit there someday. I just do. I know there's life up there. And then funny enough, in my NDE experience, I had, I, I visited the stars. And in that moment, everything was so aligned because I was shown a remembrance of that time of me in the field looking at that and the moment that I'm there and the star is right there and I'm there thinking this is what it looks like when you're fully aligned when you're when you're fully receptive to all the clues that are constantly left we're so caught up in the noise so much that we don't follow all those wonderful little clues and messages so that was something very special for me. And then I was shown and told there is no judgment. There is no judgment. We created that here, judgment. Because what happens is this, the life review, it's not that you go and you judge yourself. You basically are looking at the life you played out and you're playing out and you get to see it and you see like, oh, if I just you know, listen intuitively to more of the divine voice that I do hear and block out, you know, more of the noise. You can navigate very differently here on planet Earth. So I recognize that. And that was a, a real big eye opener for me, that was. And then in the same breath, I was shown that as they were playing my life with you, they, they, sh they said, they said, Larry, they asked me a question like, how many days did you, um, I don't know, let's just say go on holiday for, because it's, it's, it's escaping me now exactly that particular question. And I exaggerated by a day, like, oh, five days. But I knew that it was four days, but I said five days. And I, then they said, um, five days, are you sure? I goes, yeah. And they were showing me how easy it is for us just to exaggerate ever so slightly. Yeah, this, it's, it's always a little bit more of something. And they were trying to correct me, showing me that if you say, the truth like you know it in that moment how you're more aligned with the outcome that you you're asking for that you're wanting it's because those they were suggesting these little exaggerations are what puts us out of alignment a lot they're very little it's nothing damaging it just shifts it and then they reference the movie sliding doors that parallel when you just miss the 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 tube door, you know, how that looks. And they were just showing me that. They were showing, you know, everything. Because I was constantly reminded the magic is within you. The magic is within you constantly, constantly. The beautiful thing that helped me through a lot of the stuff and then, well, the not so good stuff because there's a there was a lot of those. There was humiliation. I had to go through a humiliation test. I had to go through a torture test. There was quite a few things. And I went through some beautiful, beautiful things. But they were basically just letting me know, 
that um, we do create a lot. We're, we're definitely co-creators and there is free will, absolutely. But there was also what they called um, um, agreements, how we pre, well, we make a lot of agreements. I won't say pre because there is no time. There is no time over there. And I was shown that and I was trying to figure out, well, how do you say that? How do you say there is no time? with all this going on. And I was also shown that it's easy just to explain through dream state. Like when you dream and you're going from scene to scene, from scenario to scenario, there is no time. So for an average 3D thinker that you can kind of comprehend that and understand it. But this information is so big that, and you're, 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 you just, you can handle it. You can, you can, you can receive the information because you're free of your earthly concerns. So that was the thing. Crossing over was for me, probably the most magical experience I've ever had in my entire life, if I'm honest.